Okay, we are back with more soap. This is going to be season three, episode six. So in the last episode, Bert got back to Earth and encountered Alien Bert and ran away. So I guess this episode is going to be the Battle of the Berts. And we're probably going to get confused and forget which one is which because they are very similar. I've got my friend and my caffeinated beverage. In the last episode of Soap, Real Bert was beamed home, but Alien Bert answered the door, much to both Bert's astonishment. So Real Bert ran away, figuring two Berts would be too much for Mary. Then he brought Millie home, much to Mary's surprise. Chester, much the same as before, has planned a rendezvous with another woman. And because Tim hasn't been much in the bedroom, Ren hasn't been getting much. And Billy, although much younger, is very much taken with his teacher. Too much, it won't be, after this episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates, and these are the Campbells, and this is Soap. I glare on my screen from the sun coming up and shining off my window. I'm trying to figure out how to fix it. <clears throat> early. It's like 7 a.m. Okay, so this is real bird. Let's see if we can keep track. You man, listen, you gotta come right down here. I gotta tell you something. It's unbelievable what I'm gonna tell you. You won't believe what I'm gonna tell you. It's so unbelievable what I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I can't tell you. No, 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 no. Mayor, Mayor, you gotta come here. I can't come home. Just come down here. I just gotta talk to you, please, now. No, no, I'm not in any trouble. Nothing like that. Yeah, I'm in a little trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble here. Mary, get down here. <laughs> Now, Mary, listen, Tom, Mary, come on now, get a hold of yourself and calm down. All right, now, listen, if you see me between here and home, don't pay any attention to me. <laughs> Mary, Mary, what's the matter? Take it, Mary. Come on now. Take, take it easy, Mary. Just take it easy. All right. So, how you been? <laughs> Why are you all right there? Just... Down here, I'm at, I'm at Mr. Klein's. The Klein's drugstore, just... All right, all right, all right, I'll be waiting for you. I still think he should have stood his ground and fought Alien Burke. It's his house. His planet. His ketchup. gets really fogged up. Well, I thought of that, too. Except later, I woke up in the middle of the night and found him in my bed. What was he doing in your bed? Well, let's just say it's good I woke up when I did. He said he was walking in his sleep. Nah, no, nah, Millie, Bert's not like that. I like you a lot, Danny. I really do. But I gotta tell you, this is really a weird place. <laughs> Danny... Would you mind us setting the table for dinner? I have to run out for a while and meet Bert. Sure, Ma. Wait, 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 wait. So then I said, who do you think I am? What? <laughs> <laughs> Bert, what are you doing here? I think I live here. <laughs> Bert, you just phoned me and said I should go right over to meet you at Klein's drugstore. 
Come on, Mary, come on now, be serious. I mean, why would I pick lines? I'd rather meet you in bed. See that? Bed. <laughs> then who called me? Oh, I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe it was Mr. Klein. He's no dope. He flat out told was her. Voice. I was losing the entire tiny other night if he saw That's him good. before he got there. Let me verify sex maniac story. <laughs> You also said that if I should see you on the way, I should ignore you. Mary, you've been drinking. Bert! I think the lady's ready through the cookie jar. <laughs> I am not. Well, I mean, the uh, next thing you'd be saying is, have you seen two of us? You didn't call me. Yeah, Ma, it was probably a crank call. But it was Bert's voice. It was his voice. I know his voice. Take it easy, Mary. Take it easy. That's the voice. That voice. <laughs> I don't know anything about nervous breakdowns, but I think your mother's having one. I am not. Maybe I am. <laughs> Listen, now, I think it's fatigue here. You've been acting a little strange lately, and I think what this is is fatigue. Of course. He never lets us shut her eyes. So, come on. Come on, Stacey. Come on, man. You didn't call. You really didn't call? Oh, man, come on. Let's go. Come on. You're going to lie down. I may even lie down with you. That's the voice. <laughs> Fuck. She got intercepted and she didn't listen. He told her if he ran in, she ran into him to ignore him. Father, I'm just gonna mess it up. Something wrong? I think so. Mm. Chester, I need to know something. Are you having an affair? Jessica, Jessica. Oh, Jessica. Jessica, Jessica, Jessica. That's not an answer, Scotty. <laughs> Chester, you didn't answer the question. Uh, yeah. But we can't answer it, Jess. I can't dignify that question with an answer. Is that a yes or a no? That is a no. And I am surprised that you could even entertain such a thought. Well, it's a whole bunch of things. A whole bunch of little things that separately don't mean much, but added up, they begin to look very familiar and suspicious. Like what? Name one thing. Well, for one thing, You've been acting very nice and caring and cheerful lately. <laughs> nice and caring and cheerful? Yes. Would you like it if I came home and ignored you? If I spat on you and moved out, then you really feel secure. Chester, that's not what I mean. That is what you said, Jess. You were suspicious because I am nice and caring and cheerful. And you also went back to the gym. The gym? Yes. They think I'm carrying on with one of the guys at the gym? <laughs> it's just that, you know, when you were fooling around you went to the gym chess i've always gone to the gym i know <laughs> this is very good so far a Secretary nice very for cheerful 20 years? man who does push-ups is probably having an affair and you didn't come home last night <laughs> i told you why jess when i called the meeting with ralph hirschberg went on for so long that i missed the last train i stayed at a hotel when you did come home, you were reeking of perfume. Ralph's. <laughs> Ralph's perfume? This will probably come as an enormous shock to you, Jess. It did to me. Ralph Hirschberg is gay. <laughs> Ralph Hirschberg? A queen, Jess. <laughs> And Maureen are so happy, and they have those two lovely children. Yeah, well, that's what I kept telling myself. But when he tried to kiss me on the mouth, just oh. <laughs> gross. I had to believe that. I thought he had changed. But he's fucking gross. I heard he's practically engaged to Maureen's hairdresser. Oh. <laughs> Poor Maureen. I should call her. Don't tell her, Jess. Why not? Why not? Yes. Her heart, it's weak enough already. <laughs> Maureen Hirschberg has a weak heart? Of course. Is it any wonder with her daughter dating a member of the PLO? <laughs> her son staying in a closet all day with his head in a bag of glue? Uh, <laughs> you see, Jess, Maureen has the problems about you. Well, it's just that, you know, when it happened before, Chester, it hurt me so much that now the littlest thing makes me wonder. Chester, that's because you have time on your hands. If we were farmers, you wouldn't worry. Because if we were farmers, you wouldn't have time. <laughs> oh, Jessica. I'm sorry. 
Okay. I'll forgive you this time. <laughs> Come to bed. In a moment, Chester. Jessica is changing, though. She's not going to fall for the fucking bullshit this time. So what's the problem? Oh, I feel terrible, Corinne. I mean, Dutch has laid his whole life on the line for me, and now I'm having second thoughts. What do you mean? I am sick of it. <laughs> Good. Everything he does bothers me. I mean, I hate the way he looks. I hate the way he walks. I hate the way he talks. I hate the way he chews his food when he bothers to chew it. I hate everything about him. Have you told him? Not yet. Well, I wouldn't get him too angry, Eunice. The man killed once. <laughs> I am disturbed, Corinne. I'm a disturbed person. I mean, when he was in jail, when we were on the run, I adored him. Now I've got him and I don't. I fell in love with the event, Corinne, not the man. I never see enough of Tim to get sick of him. <laughs> Dutch does things that drive me up the walls. But do you know what he does? Never mind. Oh, what? I can't. It's too disgusting. Oh, come on. Tell me. You'll Eunice just wanted danger, and dangerous guys can be fucking gross. Grow up. Eunice. I can't. Well, what does it have to do with? It's about... About, uh, never mind. Oh, Eunice. You like I'm anal? Well, tell me quickly, what's it about? Boogers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, quick, hide. Why are we hiding, Corinne? Look. What are you looking at? Put your menu down, Eunice. <laughs> Who is that? It's your father. <laughs> it is not. Take another look. <laughs> so it looks a little like Daddy. Eunice, what are we going to do? I'm going to have the artichoke vinaigrette and the cold salmon with dill sauce. No, I mean about Daddy. Oh, Corinne, how do we even know it's him? Not every gray-haired man is daddy. It's daddy. No, it's not. The ears are completely different. Say his name. Say that looks. man is daddy. I would know daddy anywhere. And I wouldn't. It is not daddy. Daddy. Not daddy. It is not daddy. It is absolutely not daddy. And I'll tell you why it's not daddy. Because if that was daddy, the woman he's with would be mother. <laughs> Eunice is naive. Corinne's not. It's nice here. Very, very nice. It's, I like it a lot. Good. Why are we here? What do you mean? Fucking it's Billy's out on a date with Mary down. Kay Letourneau. The back row. It's not listed in the phone book. There's not even a name on the door. And yet it's packed. <laughs> I know. And I'm ashamed of myself. What do you mean? Well, it's for people who are sneaking around like we are. Don't want to be seen, and it's not right, Billy. I get the feeling I'm being dumped. <laughs> Listen, Billy, I'm not just an older woman. I'm a teacher. I don't see any good coming through this. Terrific. I'm being dumped an hour away from the nearest phone. <laughs> you should be out with teenage girls, cheerleaders, roller skating on Jones Beach, Pepsi and French fries at Popsy after school. Look, I'd love to be with someone nice and young and full of life who likes the same things that I do. Well, there, you see. And I am. You are? Yes. Um, I could learn to skate. <laughs> I hate skating. Me too. I hate this plot Good evening. Line. Would you uh, care for a drink? Ah, uh, yes. Leslie? Ah, uh, I'll have a vodka tonic. And I'd like uh, a... May I see your ID, please? My ID? You want my ID? <laughs> you flatter me, sir. I've been asked for an ID in years. Sometime tonight would be nice. <laughs> oh, it just so happens that I left my ID on my plane. <laughs> Do I have to call over the manager? I mean, must I really embarrass you by calling over the manager and telling him that Billy Sinatra is being checked for hot? <laughs> what would you like to drink, sir? I'll have a 7 up. Very good. <laughs> 
You were wonderful. Thanks. Want to dance? Sure. Clean this up. somewhere else do you no nah, listen i don't care who sees us because if they see us they have no business here either amen don't look what i don't believe it what my sister with another man do you want to go someplace else no nah, listen two of my teachers are here my sister's here who else could possibly show up <laughs> Robin's novel. <laughs> this is the Bible. One doesn't finish the Bible. Jesse begat David. David begat Solomon. Solomon begat Aaron. And Aaron begat Elias. And Elias begat Tim. Corinne, please. Look, I don't mind a little begatting, but how about begatting around with me a little bit? I've used a lot already. Let's begin the begats. <laughs> My religion is very important to me. You're using your religion as an excuse to avoid me, and I find that detestable. I can't help but farm the way I am. I have certain needs. And I don't? Where's their baby? Look at you. It looks like you're wearing a spider's web. <laughs> oh, so I'm cheap. Is that it? <laughs> I'm an oversexed tart, right? <laughs> there doesn't seem to be anything else on your mind these days. Are you calling me a nympho? No, I didn't say that. Well, that's okay. Go ahead, say it. Say it, Father Flotsky. Corinne, me darling. You're a cute lass, but you're an info. The shoe fits, Corinne. So you are calling me a nympho. You just admitted it. You called me a nympho. Come in. Hello. I heard you two fighting, and I thought you'd like some cocoa. Thanks. Corinne? No, thanks, Ma. Did you hear that? The priest called me a nympho. Nympho? Is that one of the Marx brothers? I may as well be married to a eunuch. Did you hear that? Eunuch? I didn't say you were a eunuch. I said you might as well be one. I don't see the difference. You called me a nympho. No, I didn't. You called me a eunuch. No, I didn't. You didn't? No. <laughs> you want to go to bed now? I have to finish Leviticus. Eunuch. Nympho. <laughs> uh -huh. Here it is. Eunuch. <laughs> <laughs> to do, Tim. I mean, I've done everything I know how. I've been patient. I've been angry. I've been understanding. I've been obstinate. So what are you saying, Corinne? That you want other men? No. I don't want other men. I want you. Corinne, he's a eunuch. <laughs> Ma, why don't you go make some coffee? Okay. Do you suppose his father was a eunuch, too? <laughs> So? You want 
a divorce? Do you? No. <gasps> Me either. Let's hope not. She took him from his dream of but being a priest. So do I. Then I guess I should go. Do you? You wanted me, Corinne. I was a priest. I wanted you, but I was a priest. So I left the church. Now I'm leaving you. I love the church, Corinne. I, I still do. And I love you just as much. But I can't have you. You can have me. I'm still here for you. I can't, Corinne. As much as I want to, I can't. As much as I love you. My past won't let me. I tried. But I can't undo all those years. But I love you. And I love you. One demonic baby and you can't stay. fuck again. I'm gonna say goodbye to my son. Tim was barely even a character, but still, she fucked his life up, taking him from the ministry. Oh, Ma. Corinne, darling. I've lost him. No, Corinne. No, you haven't lost him. He's leaving me. Darling, you loved him for something he never was. Something you'd hoped he'd be, and he loved you the same way. So you see, you never really lost each other. Because in order to do that, you've got to find each other first. And you never did. <laughs> she only wanted him because she couldn't have him to begin with. That's what made him so attractive to her. Will Millie and Danny ever have a meaningful relationship? What could it possibly be based on? What will Corinne do now that Tim has left her? Will it be more fun? What will happen with Billy and his teacher? Will he be tested on it? Now that the real bird called Mary and the alien bird told her he didn't, what will Mary do if the real bird calls her again? What will Corinne and Eunice do now that they've seen Chester in a restaurant with another woman? Will they tell Jessica? Will they finish lunch first? These questions and many others will be answered in the next episode of So. Okay. That was season three, episode six of Soap. I did not like it. <laughs> There's literally not a single plot line in this episode that I'm enjoying. I don't like the Mary Kay Letourneau shit with Billy. I don't like Chester's infidelity. I do kind of like that Jessica doesn't seem to be believing him as easily. That's nice. But it's also bullshit that it's still happening because we've done this with Chester. Like... I, I, I legitimately thought that sending him to jail and having him get the shit kicked out of him by Dutch and losing his memory and going through all of this, that he went through so much and grew nothing. It's frustrating. And it's, it's nice to see that Jessica is changing, but fucking fuck Chester, I guess, because he's just not going... He's not going to be a decent human being, no matter what he has to go through. 